Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to compare the classic one-handed backhand with the modern one-handed backhand. And the one thing that stands out is that the classic backhand was performed with a continental grip. And when this is the case, it is a lot more difficult to be vertical shortly after contact because the wrist is in a very unfavorable position to do so. And when you take a look at the position of my hand in a continental grip, you can see there is nothing really under my hand. The tips of my fingers are holding the racket and therefore it is a lot more difficult uh, to have that vertical swing path. Players with a classic one-handed backhand that utilize the continental grip often would have the racket face slightly open as they finish the stroke and this is just a result of the continental grip. And because the racket face tends to open up more as we get the arm further away from the body when the one-handed backhand is struck with a continental grip, that means that it's far more difficult to have power and control at the same time. And this was evident in how the one-handed backhand was struck way back in the day. Let's go back to the 30s where Fred Perry used to play. So players back in those days didn't really use their body. They struck the one-handed backhand with a continental grip and it would mostly play the ball out of the arm. So there was re really not a lot of body movement and there was a lot of forearm movement involved and the backhand was a very short stroke overall. Mostly they would depend on the pace of the incoming ball to generate power. And it looks something like this. And with time, the one-handed backhand evolved into more of a body shot where the entire body was helping the arm out. And the, one of the first players to have the body involved in the backhand was Rod Laver. So Rod Laver had a very modern setup on his one-handed backhand. If you ever see uh, pictures or videos of Rod Laver, he would load the backhand up just like the players do today. He would have this V formation between his front leg and the torso and he would have the shoulder blade towards the ball and he would have his chin over the shoulder looking at the incoming ball. And when the backhand is set up in this way where we have this huge shoulder turn, it is unlikely that players are going to strike the ball like this uh, because it's a very counterintuitive movement. So naturally, when the backhand is set up in this way, there's going to be a rotation into the contact. And what this means now, not only will the swing path change, but also the racket is going to drop at a different place. So take a look. If I start the backhand like this, where I'm just turned sideways and I drop my racket, the racket will drop with the strings parallel to the side fence. If I get my shoulder blade towards the ball, now the strings are going to drop parallel to the back fence. So all of a sudden, there's more range of motion going into the contact, but it's not only that. We also are utilizing torso rotation. So we're going to rotate into the contact. We're going to involve the body a lot more. So let's take Rod Laver, for example. He used the continental grip on his back end. He used to drop his racket behind the body like this, and he rotated into the contact. And this is why I still consider Rod Laver's back end a classic back end because his racket face was open as he came around the body like this. So when the back end is struck in this way, there's going to be a lot less topspin. And all you have to do is focus on the tip of my racket. You can see what happens shortly after the contact. So on a Rod Laver back end, he used to rotate into the contact and on the tip of the racket used to remain on the non-dominant side of the body. So he used to point towards the left. So the racket never came around this way. The tip of the racket would stay towards the outside. Now let me show you what that looks like. I'm not going to allow the tip of the racket to come across the body. I'm going to keep it towards my left. You can see there it's a very flat ball. You can see that second bounce. There's very little spin on a backhand like this. You can see I missed that one long. So also there's a problem with control. But we can get a tremendous amount of power this way. The problem is that it's difficult to get the ball to fly on a curve inside the baseline. And most likely we cannot, for that reason, hit it very hard. We have to be a little bit more gentle and most likely rely on the pace of the incoming ball. And this type of backhand stayed around for a long time. Players such as Ivan Lendl or even Michael Stich used to hit the backhand in exactly the same way. The tip of the racket and never really came around. If you ever see Ivan Lendl backhand, he used to have a really uh, big setup with a big shoulder turn. He used to rotate into the contact, but the tip of the racket never came around this way. He used to stay towards his non-dominant side. And Michael Stich hit the backhand in a very similar way. And by no means are these classic backhands such as Laver, Lendl or Stich uh, bad backhands. They're excellent backhands. They can hit the ball with a lot of power. But if we compare a classic backhand to a modern backhand, we can see a big difference. And here are the characteristics of a modern one-handed backhand. And guys, when it comes to the modern one-handed backhand, once players started to switch towards the eastern side, 
now topspin was a lot easier for the simple reason that when we have the hand in the eastern grip now the thumb is going to be underneath the racket which makes it a lot easier to go in a vertical fashion over the ball if you compare that to the old school continental grip you can see that just the bottom of our fingers are underneath the grip and this is much more difficult when it comes to the vertical swing pad not only that but also the wrist is in a very unfavorable position as well in an eastern grip we're dealing more with the back side of our hand which is a lot easier uh, to go in an upward fashion across the ball but it's not only that remember we talked about the racket face being open the further away we go from the ball in a continental grip this is exactly the opposite in an eastern grip so once i'm in an eastern grip if i make contact you can see the racket face is in a neutral position now as i go across the racket remains in a neutral position this is a lot more favorable when it comes to topspin and when it comes to power the eastern backhand grip is also a big factor because the wrist is going to be slightly extended and is in a far more stable position compared to the continental grip so when we have the wrist slightly extended and now there's a lot more stability in the racket and we can accelerate much faster so there's going to be absolutely no difference in the setup so rod labor set the backhand up the same way Roger Federer sets up his backhand. The difference between those two backhands is what happens shortly after contact. And all you have to do is concentrate on the tip of my racket. So here's, for example, a Roger Federer backhand. The tip of the racket will not stay towards the left side of my body. It will come around. So the tip of the racket is gonna come around and now it's gonna start going backwards. And this is how topspin is created on the one-handed backhand. And when we hit the one-handed backhand with topspin, we can hit it much harder and therefore indirectly generate more power because we're able to swing freely. We don't have to be cautious in other words and we don't depend on the pace of the incoming ball that much. So let me show you one of these backhands. I'm gonna have the tip of the racket come around the body and then point towards the back fence. So let's see what happens. You can see there, there's a lot more spin. You can see that the ball is bouncing higher in the opposing fence and I can hit the ball a lot harder therefore. I don't have to be careful. Let me try one more. Allow the tip of the racket to come through. You can see there, uh, the pace of the ball is actually decreased a little bit. This is the truth about topspin for any shot, whether it be the forehand or the serve. When we put more topspin on the ball, we reduce the speed. But what that means in turn is that we can swing a lot faster without sacrificing control. Let me try one more. I'm gonna to try to take a big cut at this one and let's see what happens. <laughs> uh, that was a little bit better. You can see that super high bounce on the other side. That is a topspin one-handed backhand. And some of the pioneers of the topspin backhands were Guillermo Villas and Stefan Edberg. These are the guys that I was able to identify as the first players to hit the backhand with more topspin. And the way they struck the ball was exactly like Federer strikes it. Guillermo Villas used to rotate into the contact and the tip of the racket came around this way. And one key to a topspin backhand is where the racket finishes. Usually the tip of the racket will point towards the back fence and the cap of the racket will point uh, towards the other side. Let me show you from this side. So the topspin backhand, we usually have a swing path that goes vertically across the body and the tip of the racket goes towards the back fence and the butt cap of the racket is pointing towards the other side. How about a more flat backhand like Stan Wawrinka? So a backhand like that still has a lot of spin, but it's definitely more flat than, for example, a backhand of Roger Federer or Richard Gasquet. And here's the one difference. So on a Wawrinka backhand, the tip of the racket will go around the body, but it will come through a little more. So it's more of a horizontal swing path, resulting in less spin. But anytime we're hitting the ball in an upper cross and back fashion, we are generating top spin. It's just gonna be less RPMs on the ball than on a backhand where the tip of the racket is coming more vertically across the ball this way. So let me try to do uh, one of these Vavrinka type backhands and I'm gonna allow the tip of the racket to come through the ball a little bit more. You can see there, it's definitely a more flat shot. And I'm actually, whoops, I missed that one. So again, when you hit flat, you make more mistakes for sure. Let me try one more. There's the Vavrinka style backhand, so the ball is going faster, uh, but there's definitely a lower percent of shots compared to the topspin one-handed backhand. Another huge difference between a classic one-hander and a modern one-hander is how the body is helping the racket go around the body. So just picture someone uh, like a Pete Sampras or Denis Shapovalov. These guys would have the arms go so far back there. I heard a story that Pete Sampras was so flexible, he could touch his elbows behind his back and Denis Shapovalov hits the backhand 
in such a way that he, his hands are almost touching behind the body. So I can't do this because I'm a, a two-hander naturally. I'm going to try to go as far back as I can. And so I can go to about right here. But when we do this movement where the hands are going in the opposite directions, we are drawing more energy from the core mostly from the black muscles. So what happens is that shortly after contact, we start utilizing that left arm going in the opposite direction. And now we're helping the racket go around the body by squeezing the shoulder blades and puffing our chest out. And some players are so flexible that they can go very far back. And the first player I was able to identify that had such a finish was Stefan Edberg, one of my favorite one-handed backhands of all time. Stefan was one of the first players who had this huge finish where both arms were going in the opposite directions after contact. So when it comes to the recreational level, which backhand should you use? The classic one-hander or the modern one-hander? Well, it's going to be a little bit of a complicated answer because a classic backhand can actually be quite beneficial to your one-handed backhand. And here's what I mean. The one-handed backhand is a very versatile shot. So there's going to be times where you're going to have to chip the backhand, you're going to have to block it or bunt it. You will also have to have a backhand volley with one hand and you will have to hit a slice. And playing the backhand with one hand, even the classic way, helps all those shots. As I stated in the beginning of the video, one characteristic of the classic backhand that it had less body involvement and was more played out of the arm. And this will sometimes be the case, for example, on a bunt backhand. You're not gonna use your body that much. Just think of John McEnroe. He used to bunt a lot of backhands. This is not a shot that's relying on the body too much. It's basically an arm movement, and this is where it's very similar to a classic one-handed backhand. But when it comes to your rally shot, the backhand that you're trying to hit aggressively, and that you're gonna hit most of the time, you absolutely have to utilize the modern one-handed backhand. And here's what you have to do. First of all, there has to be more body involvement. So you can't set the backhand up like this and just use the arm. Uh, you're doing yourself a big disservice because now you're relying on the arm, which is a very weak way to make power, and it's also going to be less consistent, therefore. What you have to do is set the backhand up with a big shoulder turn. If the ball is a little bit lower, you can even dip into the ball. And now when you do this setup, naturally you're going to rotate into the contact. Now here comes the important part. You have to command your hand to go up and across the body. What I say is to go at least to the level of your dominant shoulder. And you have to make the tip of the racket go towards the back fence and point the butt cap of the racket towards the opposing side. So when you hit your backhand in that way, you are utilizing your body in the most optimal way and making the movement of the arm more effortless. And guys, if you want to improve your one-handed backhand, I just came up with a brand new course called the Intuitive One-Handed Backhand. For more information, click the link in my pinned comments.